and welcome to episode 27 of Into the Podcast. I am your host, Sam, and I am joined by the man with the plan, the boy with the toy, the Ryan... It's Ryan. Um, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than what's your name again? <laughs> Yeah, true. That guy. This guy that I see sometimes. <laughs> How are you, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks to you. I'm all right, you know. We good. both uh, we both got together. We ate a pizza, bitched bet- about our days a bit. Yeah. And now we- it's time to talk to the peeps. The, the millions and millions. And millions. And millions. I joined a uh, Facebook group today called WWF Attitude Era. Oh, amazing. I, I'm going to have to join that. Oh, mate, I can't wait. I yeah. can't wait. I just want my feed to be full of it. So yeah. I'm going to like yeah. everything that comes up for now, just so my feed is only WWF Attitude Era. Nice. That's good. Yeah, between that and like Call of Duty clips and stuff, I quite like them as well to watch. Yeah. Watching other people be better at a game than me. And there's a lot of them that are better than us. A lot of them. In fact, we played last night and we did awful. Yeah, yeah, we got our asses kicked a yeah. lot. You and me died a lot quite early on, and then we had to go to Kyle's screen to watch him hide on a bin and look at the ground. Yeah, yeah, he did that uh, a lot. Several well. times, actually. Several times, um, because he just left us to die. Yeah. So we go out in a blaze of glory. We're always fighting, constantly battling, and then Kyle's just searching fucking cupboards for, for like bandages. bandages or like, you know, <laughs> bottles of purified water or something. <laughs> it's so irritating. It's so annoying. I, I'll get shot. Like, you'll come out guns blazing trying to cover me. Like, Kyle, where are you? Kyle, one sec, one sec. He's I, just, I he, found a picture of a dog. He's so scared of losing his gear, isn't he? I know. He's just like, just come and fight. Yes, it's 3v1, but fuck it. Ah, uh, I mean, we're always going to lose our gear. We lose our gear a lot. <laughs> Literally every game we lose our gear. It's fine. Bless yeah. him. But other than that, I love him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a good lad. He's a cutie. So, um, you mentioned something as soon as I turned off the mic last week that I was like, oh, talk about that on the next episode. You read an article on the BBC about podcasts. I bloody well did, you know. Talk to us about that, mate, because that was interesting. It was interesting. So it was just an article about just about podcasts in general, and it was on BBC homepage, and it was just saying how... I think it was questioning like the popularity of podcasts because like podcasts had a massive rise, didn't they? Like where everyone was podcasting. Lockdown. Yeah. That's stuff why like that. the price of everything's gone through the roof. Like is it on microphones, webcams, all yeah. shit like that are double the price. That's what I mean. Anything were, home yeah. related. Yeah. Like the same for home gym stuff. Oh, like, of course. Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I was lucky enough that I did my home gym like years and years ago, but now I'm sitting on bloody fortune. Oh, I bet, yeah. Um Anyway, the article uh, it basically said that there's like they won they think there's a decline in like the conversational podcasts. Okay. I was like, well, that's great because that's what we do. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think it was mainly because people tend to get bored of them, as in the people doing them. Mm-hmm. And it said like there's something like three to four million podcasts out there at the moment, but only seven hundred twenty thousand of them. I've got past 10 episodes. Yes, boy. We're on 27. We're smashing it. We but, are but, in the top yeah. fucking 720,000. Exactly. I mean, we're basically one of the top podcasts in the world. Basically, yeah. Um, it goes Joe Rogan, us. Yeah, pretty much. And we're coming for you, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> we bloody are. But that's what I'm saying. Like, the most popular ones are always going to be, like, your sort of celebrity ones. Because, like, course, someone like yeah. Joe Rogan, he always has guests on, doesn't he? So they're always massive. And then a lot of them are... Um, you know, it's like specific themes, like yeah, I don't know ones that look like it's serial killers or stuff like that. They're they're popular, but you know, we're still staying strong for the chatting bollocks Absol- podcast. Absolutely, it's so weird. Like, so I was talking to talking to our boy Chunk on the Utopia Project, and he was saying how like he, he's really big on obviously he owns his own business, got mm-hmm. several things on the go. So he's big about pushing other people's stuff because he wants that back. Yes. Like we're all trying to build something here. So push other people's stuff. And he said, my previous podcast, he says that was really easy to push because as soon as someone said, I'm really into film, you did a film podcast. He goes, I struggle to know when to drop your name because I don't know what you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was I like, Pop culture, I guess. I, like, I, yeah. It's hard to define us because we will talk about films, TV a lot, but then we'll, yeah, like just talk 40 minutes on wrestling or, yeah. or cereal or skateboarding. Definitely. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? Of 
if you have like a true crime podcast, you aren't going to drop listeners from that because they know what they're getting every week. Oh yeah, exactly. True crime, whereas with us, you could be right into your film. So we do an Oscars episode. It's like banging and well looking forward to this. We do an episode like today, which is going to be gaming related. People are like, well, I'm not into gaming, so I'm not listening to that episode. So we will then see like numbers drop, yeah. so to speak. But then it's just knowing, okay, it's not for some people. Next week might be, and they'll come back. And I mean, our graph's all over the place yeah, like, so with episodes, but I prefer it this way because we're hitting several markets. There's several people. Yeah, and all, it's nice. And it's, it keeps us entertained as well. Because I suppose thinking about that article, if it's saying that like most people give up after 10 episodes, or before 10 episodes, sorry, not many get to 10 episodes. I wonder if it's because they get bored. Whereas because yeah. of this, we can just throw in whatever we want. And... This is why we're not as popular as Joe Rogan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, it says something, and we do rely on it way too much, way too much, really, compared to what it was at the beginning. But as soon as we found out we could just turn up with no plan and talk, that was kind of the birth of what it is now, of just, do we need anything? All right, we've got segments. Yeah. But we, we've turned up several times. Where we're like, well, we've got no segments this week. Mm-hmm. So let's just talk and see what happens. And th- like you say, they're the longest episodes and the ones people enjoy. Yeah. But um, yeah, so basically what we're saying is, can you share with your friends and your family? Because we want to be in the top five, 500,000. Yeah. That's the now, next step. Now we're talking. Um, now we're talking. But yeah, I suppose equally on, on top of that, you know, obviously the Eliminator's not got long left for it this hasn't. one and we're not going to go straight into another one. Um, so... If anyone's got ideas for new segments or things that they'd like to hear, um, I know a few people, like you said, have said they enjoy the conversational stuff where we just chat nonsense. Mm. But equally, if someone would like to see some more structured stuff, we're we're open to that, aren't we? We're always up for new ideas, which is oh, which is de- fun. definitely. And I really envy people because I've thought so many times, like a lot of the podcasts I listen to have always coming up with new games, always coming up with ideas, and I just can't. Like, I come up with bits, but I don't think of a lot. And uh, going back to the Utopia project, I was watching some of their stuff recently and I'm like, you guys are fucking geniuses. So they're so creative. So they stole the idea of stand up, sit down. So they did a live stream and they basically just ring someone and they're like, you stood up or sit down, but they bet on it first. Right. (laughs) Nice. And then they just changed that to shirt on, shirt off, slippers on, slippers off or whatever. Yeah. uh, They have a segment called Chip Advisor where they talk about what they had for their teas. And it was a live stream. They asked people watching what they had for their teas. And I was just like, that's so simple. But with a fun name like Chip Advisor, yeah, I, that's pe- that's everyone's favourite segment. What you had for your tea? Yeah, love it. it. It's fucking brilliant. It is brilliant. So, they are, they so, are so turn great, this yeah. off and listen to the Utopia podcast. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, oh, I dear. suppose we should talk about nerdy shit because that's kind of what we do the best, isn't it? That is what we are passionate about. So I want to talk to you about Magic the Gathering again. Oh yeah, that that game that we never play. That game that we never play, ever. So um, after pushing Magic the Gathering Arena, we've had quite a lot of people sign up, which is nice. I've still not played a lot. Um, Bloody Ed. Ed, are you listening, Ed? He's asked me several times to play and uh, just doesn't. Just just (laughs) mugged you off. I said, just don't reply to my messages. He hates me, I think, is what he's telling me. (sighs) But um, So I've decided because... I obviously went to play with my friend, as I mentioned on the last episode. I got absolutely hammered. I played with you guys. I got absolutely hammered because I've got shit starter decks. So I've decided, right, I'm going to build my own. Yeah. But, well, all my decks are built. But I mean, like, I'm going to look online at what professionals have built. And Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a look. So I was like, right, what do I want? So I was like, okay, I'm going to tell you what the deck I was looking at was. And then I'm going to tell you the price after I priced it up. Bearing in mind, I went for the cheapest card I could find. Oh, God, yeah. So I went for an Elvish deck. Right. You know I love an Elvish deck. You do love elves. £92.60 to build that. <clears throat> from from nothing? From So that's with that's not including mana, because I've got all the mana. Right, okay. But this, and is, this is a standard this deck. This is a standard so 60 how, card deck. 60 cards. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, I can believe it. A zombie deck. £105.60. <sighs> yeah. I then found something really cute. A bloke wanted to get his wife into magic. Right. And uh, he was like, oh, you know, she's a, she's a bit of like a girly girl. Um, so we wanted to find some, you know, I didn't want to give her goblins and all this sort of shit. So I asked her what she liked. And she was like, well, I like birds. So he built her a bird deck. Right. Okay. And I was like, that is genius. And it looked really good. It was quite simple, quite like, you know, it's, it's a strong deck. It's not complicated. It's a very good starter deck, but quite strong. So I priced that up and that was... So £28.45, but if you are to get your sideboard as well, so 
for those of you that don't know, you have a sideboard. So if you was playing against someone who's got a lot of flying and you've got nothing that can defend against that, you can swap some cards in from your sideboard uh, okay. on the next that. game to help. So if someone's banging out loads of enchantments, loads yeah. of artifacts, you could then bring in some cards from your sideboard that destroy artifacts and enchantments. Uh, okay. So with that, that'll take it up to like 53 quid, which uh, wasn't bad. That's not bad that's at okay. all. For then, birds. Oh, absolutely. Then I found the goblin deck, my friend. This goblin deck, so all of them have a little thing underneath them of how best to play them, what they're good for, that sort of thing. Now, this goblin deck, everything was one page's worth. This was a two-pager. Mm-hmm. This goblin deck can destroy you in three moves. Fucking hell. In four moves. So the two examples, one of them was destroying three moves. The other one was give them um, 175 damage in three moves or something. It was ridiculous. That's £168 for the deck and another £53.50 for the sideboard. Wow. So I won't be doing crazy money. So I'm building a bird deck. (laughs) 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 So I was going on today. So, you know, I love my elves. And uh, so I was looking at that. And the thing that takes it up is what is one of the instants called uh, collected company and collected company is 20 pound a card and you need four of them in your deck. So that is where the majority of that 92 pound comes from. Right. So I just Googled what is similar to that card. And there was, so Collective Company basically allows you to look at the top six cards and put a couple on the battlefield. Okay, that's good. Whereas I found some that are 20p a card, and it's the same thing, but you put them in your hand and not on the battlefield. Right, So instead okay. of 20 pounds, so I can probably make this deck for 20 quid. Yeah, okay, that's good. That's cool. So I think I'm going to give it a go, because they're all really, like, the most expensive creature is £2. They're all, like, 25p cards, because they're all tap for mana, tap for mana, tap right, for mana. Right, okay. And then there's ones that just bulk up all your elves. Yeah, Nice. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll, yeah, so I'm going to have a go. I'm going to buy loads and loads of cards. I've them all drop on my doorstep. Like Kyle did the other day when he messaged us that picture of... Picture of it, load, yeah, 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 yeah. It is nice because I had a phase through that because obviously I got my vampire deck at Christmas and yeah. then I just I was buffing that out, like random cards that I'd seen that I wanted. And so it was so nice when you come home and you just like loads of little packages waiting for you. Yeah. Um, inside your front door, just all loads of little cards. Just loads of little cards. Which would be annoying if you get one on day two and one on day seven, because you're like, I can't build it till the last know, one comes yeah, back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've had quite, I've been getting more into the magic side of stuff of, right, I need to take this serious. I need to force people to play. Um, but then I had the greatest moment of my life recent, right, recently, Ryan, when it comes to magic. Go on. And you know what this is. I do know what this is. I had a conversation on the internet with your mother about magic the gathering yeah she messaged the facebook page i think it was on friday and i totally missed it Mm. like because i don't really pay attention to a lot of the notifications that come through on there because we don't get loads of messages um so i didn't pick it up till maybe the sunday and she'd messaged me saying oh should we buy this card for your dad and I was like, I'm so sorry I didn't see this message. Yeah, that does look quite good. What sort of decks he got, X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, I'll send him back. Then later on, she sent me another picture. Oh, we bought this as well. How would this work? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I'm talking to Ab about magic. This is great. <laughs> I'm loving it. He literally messaged me saying, I've just been messaging your, your mum about magic. I'm having the best day of my life. <laughs> it was amazing. I ignored my child all day to talk to your mum. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, very nerdy again. People are probably aren't interested in that shit, but tough. I like it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to, the people that aren't that fussed have probably stopped listening when you said, this is probably going to be a gaming episode anyway. So, right, exactly. Yeah. So fuck it. And that, and that is a game. It's a card game. Exactly. Um, but whilst we're on games, then before we move on to a bit of a film chat, uh, I just want to remind everyone, oh no, because it will have happened. It will have happened. It will have happened. So I have- will have just done my 24-hour stream so you best of all donated well done mate congratulations i'm very proud of you Thank you did you. really you did really well i can't for believe staying awake i can't believe you went on a 15 game winning streak on rocket league oh yeah i know and i made over a grand and i've just had that tattoo on me spelt incorrectly oh it looks great it does look great doesn't it yeah um, so thank you everyone that got involved <laughs> <laughs> you'll find out about how it went next week because <laughs> we're recording on a tuesday yeah the tuesday before the friday exactly 24 hour stream so those of you that do listen um i just want to push my own shit here really so i spoke to ryan a bit back we've been having little ideas of how to give you guys a bit more um, was looking at Patreon, but we didn't really want to take money off you. Um, so it was like, but I want to do a bit more. So I've decided to set up a, a streaming um, 
sort of like username, so to speak, uh, and just start streaming a little bit more. So although it's under my name, it's always going to come under the umbrella of Into the Podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's basically just to give you guys more content, because a lot of what I'm going to be streaming is going to be with you anyway. Yeah. So for those of you that do do use Twitch, please follow um please follow us. It's Papa Roast88. Um at the moment I'm doing a lot of stream. I'm doing like one like every other day, but that's solely to prep for Friday. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm hoping once because at the minute it's quite laggy, I'm hoping to get all the gear set up. Yeah. Um a little bit better, get the computer changed out a bit so it's nice. Um but just for those of you that enjoy your gaming you know it's just something else to give you we talk about random shit on here and then maybe once twice a week i can bang a stream up you guys can watch watch me and ryan die or lose at rocket league or yeah and if you enjoy hearing us chat bollocks oh we God. do a lot of that as <laughs> it's, well and it's worse on that yeah it's normally it's us just having a go at kyle to be fair <laughs> in it just <laughs> so again that's papa roast 88 on twitch so please go over and follow us on there follow the podcast on all social medias share everything with bang out people are being really nice at sharing at the moment mm, that's good which is good because again like the conversation i was just talking about with chunk it takes you 0.1 second to click a share button or a like button to get it in front of people's faces so mm-hmm. guys you those of you that are doing it thank you so much for those of you that aren't if you wouldn't mind that'd be lovely we're not saying every week and clog up your own fucking feed but it's just nice to absolutely get it yeah. out to more people definitely so Oh, sorry, did you have something there? I was just going to say, how are you feeling about the stream? I know for the listeners, you'll have already done it, but... Yeah, fine, to be fair. Like, I remember... Well, I say fine. So, I really enjoyed last year. It was a struggle, um, but I was fucking buzzing at the end of it. Mm. Like, it really, really enjoyed it. It was good fun. Um, I've went, I've gone back and actually rewatched just some of the streams. Yeah. Um, it's going to be all over the place because, like, you get kicked off every few hours on Facebook and stuff, so I've got to restart the stream, so it won't be a continuous 24-hour. Now, the bits I'm not looking forward to is this year, my friend James, who I used to do the old podcast with, he came and stayed with me till, like, 5 a.m., brought, oh, yeah. brought me a Chinese. Yeah, let me say Early yeah. hours in the morning, I just chucked him on the stream with me. We played Mortal Kombat and shit, and nice, I had a really yeah. good time. So I've not got that this year. Um, and also, I don't have the chair I had last year. And I sat on this last night with you for two and a half hours, and I was so stiff when I stood up. So yeah. stiff. Doesn't look like a comfy chair. It's not. So I might have to see if I can borrow a computer chair from a friend if they've got like an X Rocket computer chair to see what I can do. But I'm nervous about that because I'm 35 now, dude. Like, yeah. I ticked over to 35 a couple of weeks ago, and now everything's stiffer. Yeah, so it's, I, it's a I long am. time to sit in one place as well. It like and now that I, now I've found as well that I never used to have this very often, but when I game now, my eyes get so tired. They never used to. Yeah, but recently it's been a bit of a struggle. Yeah, yeah. And what I've noticed is my eyes get tired because I've now got the ring lights pointed at me because I need the lighting for the get for gaming. Basically, yeah, of course. Um, oh shit, this sun as well. So where, where I game, the sun comes directly through the window. That's going to be hard work at fucking 5, 6 p.m. when I'm gaming. <laughs> yeah. You might have to put a rig, some sort of blind up or to, something. Yeah. Fucking hell. Um, so, yes. Thanks, everyone, for watching, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, so we've watched some films. We have. What have you watched? So I'm more interested in what you watched, but I'll just get mine out there really quickly on Amazon. I watched this. I put it on months ago and turned it off five minutes later because I was like, what's this dog shit? And it's just sat in my continued watching. So I was like, oh, I'll finish it. It's called Possum. It's an indie horror film about a guy who comes back to like his hometown in Norfolk or somewhere like that and tries to destroy... He's like a disgraced puppeteer and he's trying to destroy his puppet. Right, okay. The storyline, it's not... It's more of like a thriller horror than anything. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not demonic or anything. Right. But it's just a fucking weird film. Very, very indie. Yeah. But the puppet is terrifying. Oh, really? It's like, if you can imagine a resource Annie head, but, a, you know, the resource Annie what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah. Like a resource Annie face, but a little bit more realistic. Okay. On, like, a face hugger body, but with longer tentacles. It's fucking Ooh, terrifying. It's awful. Yeah, you just get, like, glimpse of it all, every now and then, and you're like, oh, God, it just makes you feel really uneasy. Yeah, I It's get just that. one of these films that I was like, I quite... I, I like to watch an indie film because it's going to be good or dog shit. Mm-hmm. This was very in the middle of, I didn't really get the point, but I quite liked just how much of a presence this puppet had. 
every yeah. time you saw it, you just like, oh, cool. that dude, that's gross. Get rid of it. <laughs> and every time he throws it away, it like turns up back and oh, it'll be like awful. hung up on a fucking yeah. The whole thing's very grimy. He goes back to his house. It's a grimy house. Yeah, his okay. like stepdad or whatever he grew up with or whoever lives in the house, like a grimy bloke with a fucking string vest on type job you know they're all smoking roll-ups with brown fingers oh, type. yeah you know I, know, what I, mean? I know exactly what you mean just yeah. the grimy type of film but yeah I mean, it's definitely not a recommendation so to speak but maybe if you can find like google possum and the in the um puppet in it because it's just very weird looking yeah I, I really want to see it now that you said about that yeah it was quite yeah, whoever created that in their head, like, has issues. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's quite a creative, because especially with puppets and dolls, it's kind of, people are scared of them anyway. Oh, yeah, they're freaky anyway. So you could use anything for that, and people be creeped out, but they kind of they went completely different on this one. And, yeah, it worked. That, that's I think cool. that worked nicely. How long is the film? Hour 20. Ah, perfect. Perfect, perfect time. Perfect. So I knew as soon as I saw it, I think that's why I put it on in the first place. Hour 20 indie horror. I was like, yes, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yes, mate. Ticks um, that box for you. Yeah, so not a massive recommendation. If you want to watch it, watch it. I don't think, if you've got nothing better to do, watch it. But definitely Google the image of that puppet. In fact, when we break, I'll get it up for you. Yeah, sounds um, good. Yeah, it's just random. Tell us about your film though. I'm really interested in this. Oh, so I went to the cinema at the weekend yes. and I went to watch Renfield. You did go I to did. see Renfield. The new Nicolas Cage and Nicholas Holt um, comedy action horror film. So just lots of Nicholas's doing shit. Yeah, pretty much. So for those that don't know the premise or haven't seen it, um, Nicholas Holt plays Renfield, who is the familiar of Dracula, Count mm-hmm. Dracula, played by Nicolas Cage. Of course. Um, and he is disillusioned. You know, he's been a familiar for like, I don't know, a hundred years or hundreds of years. And he's disillusioned with being like, you know, this downtrodden familiar that just set, takes victims to Dracula for him to eat. And, you know, he's sat in like a support group and they're all chatting about, a lot of this is in the trailer, you know, chatting yeah, yeah, about yeah. like how there are, you know, having a hard time with like in an abusive relationship. And the the whole theme of this film is very much like a dysfunctional relationship and yeah, how yeah. like, you know, it, all that sort of psychology that comes into it, you know, like dealing with like a narcissistic personality and, and the codependency and all those things that are like mentioned throughout. Um, Obviously I, you know, I've been on a massive Nicolas Cage binge recently um, and I've been smashing it. So I've been watching everything from like his mainstream ones to some weird and wonderful yeah, yeah, ones yeah. and everything in between. And you never know what you're going to get with Nicolas Cage. Uh, no, you do and not that's what so. I love. I love about him. He's so unpredictable. And in this, he's definitely having a lot of fun just playing Dracula. Okay. Yeah. He's like very much a secondary character, um, which I read like in the trivia, say him saying that like he, only ever accepts leading roles, which is true. Like, yeah. I can't think of anything where he's like a supporting character anymore. No, I can't really. Um, but he said he'd make an exception for Dracula because as a kid, his lifelong dream was to play Superman, Captain Nemo, and Dracula. So oh, it's a really? big tick for him to be able to play Dracula oh, finally. Of course. Um, the film itself, it was just good fun. Yeah? It was just silly, over the top, like proper, really gory violence. But like, you know, in like a silly way, um, doesn't take itself too seriously. The violence kind of reminds me of a bit like, I don't know, you know, like in Hot Fuzz where it's like a comedy, but then the violence is like uber extreme. Yes, yes, yes. That sort of level okay, where, yeah, you know, yeah. like Dracula or like Ren- Renfield, he's got super, uh, like a mini, um, small amount of Dracula's powers. But he yeah. has to eat bugs to activate that power. So he's like eating like a bloody cockroach and then he can like do backflips and shit and like kick people's faces off and (laughs) and you literally do shit like that so it is fun it's daft it's silly um it's quite nice as well to get like Nicolas cage back in the cinema because i can't remember last time i ever went to see one of his films in the cinema so a lot of his are very much like your indie Mm. like independent straight to streaming site type films i don't think i've ever seen a Nicolas cage film in the cinema (sighs) i'm just thinking about it i can't no i don't think i have you know what? I don't know if I have, actually. Because a lot of it is straight to DVD. Type. Yeah, or like his, his big mainstream stuff was when like early 2000s mm. and like late nine, like in mid 90s, wasn't it? Like, you know, when. And I wasn't going to the cinema then. No. So. No, I certainly wasn't going to watch those films. Um, 
So yeah, maybe it was the first Nicolas Cage film I've ever seen. Mm. Maybe. That's interesting. It is, isn't it? What a weird concept. Yeah. I've never thought of that before. I like, yeah. He's one of my favourite actors and I've never seen him on the big screen. Yeah, that is weird. But anyway, it's definitely check it out. If you love Nicolas Cage, you're going to love it anyway because it's him being ridiculous, being Dracula. He's over the top. Um, but even if you just want like a bit of a fun, silly, over the top film, I definitely recommend it. Don't go in expecting like a serious, like bloody period piece about Dracula or anything. The it's advert just... doesn't give you that impression. No, so exactly. If, you, if you're going in looking for that, you've not. The trailer gives gives you exactly the impression you, you, you'd want. It's yeah, fun. Fun is what I'd say. Okay, so what I do like about your description of the film there is it is the first positive review I've heard of that film. Really? I have everyone I know that's been to see it. I've heard people say, eh, it's just not very good. I've heard my daughter's mum went to see it. She's not a Nicolas Cage fan at yeah. all. She actually doesn't like Nicolas Cage. That's not, probably not going to help. Yeah, well, this is why she's my ex. <laughs> <laughs> but... um. Yeah, so we, we talk about films quite a lot. She said that she's going to see it. I was like, oh, please let me know how, how it is. And uh, I saw her a couple of days later when she picked up Little and she was like, it was the worst film I've ever seen. Yeah, like, and I, I just was don't... Like, oh, and you know what? I, and I did say to her, I expected that from you not liking Nicolas Cage because I suppose you don't... There's many actors that get away with stuff. You know how we mentioned last week about Jack Black? He gets away in mandalorian of not being great because it's jack black and we expect yeah. it and it's like we just know him and we love him and he's cheeky yeah we get we have that with nick cage we oh love absolutely him. he could bring out a dog shit film that's what that more oh, he's, he's brought out many oh, many a dog shit film and i've yeah. watched a lot of them yeah and that's why i obviously i'm definitely biased about this film because i love love nick cage but i think when you have watched a lot of nick cage films like we have you come to appreciate <sighs> them for what they are and then nick, Cage, then nick cage films they're almost Absolutely, their own yeah. genre of films they're all totally different they're all mad and quirky in their own way um so i've gone into this film what expecting that yeah that's, that's why that's why, I, that's why i'm saying I, i'm shocked that i've gone to the cinema to watch it because that's exactly the sort of thing like not dissimilar to like, i don't know willie's wonderland or something where you think okay this is going to be a ridiculous film mm -hmm. but i've gone in expecting that so even if Nicolas Cage wasn't in it, I'm not saying it's the greatest film of all time. Like I said, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, you know, a six or seven out of ten. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Not like, it's, not, it's never going to win any Oscars, but you watch the trailer, you know what you're going to get. If you like the trailer, you'll like the film. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And just, yeah, it's just daft. Yeah, that is really cool. Um, I was going to say something about him then, and it's completely gone out, out my fucking head. Were you going to say... No, it wasn't anything about him. You just said Willy's Wonderland. And I went off on a tangent in my own head. Willy, Willy Wonka. Did you know there's a, there's a Wonka film coming out this year? Mm, let me enter my mind, Palace, because I feel like I do... I did not know, know this until this. I typed in films coming out this year into Google, and it was one of the top ones. Wonka. Who's in it? Timothy Chalamet playing ah yes I playing did. Wonka a I, young Wonka I did know this like yes first meeting the Umpalumpas how fucking brilliant does that sound, film sound if you well I suppose if you're not into Willy Wonka then it won't but I do yeah I like Willy Wonka yeah I do like Willy Wonka and what what are your thoughts on Timothy Chalamet I like him and I think he's a very handsome young man he is but he does look like he is malnourished he he needs a pie he does I'll need several that. pies. He's not so, you know, give me Bradley Cooper, I'll rip his clothes off. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I mean? I ain't ripping his clothes off, but I'd, I'd, I'd mother him. Do yeah, you know what I mean? I'd yeah. bring him in, I'd give him a cuddle. I'd say, come on. I'm, he's kind I'm, of I'm like... I'm going to make you a Sam it, dinner, and he's going like to be big. He's like attractive in that sort of, like, drug addict rock star kind of way. <laughs> yes. yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like the gaunt, pale, mm. long, floppy hair, like dark eyes needs to get off the drugs and eat Too much spice for him and eat a sandwich yeah and i love a sandwich so if I ever meet timothy chalamet i'm making him a sandwich yeah well be to be good. fair you probably work in a relationship because he won't eat the sandwich so so i get two sandwiches you can have two sandwiches that's true and i love all the drugs and rock and roll exactly they're the best what we're we talking about i can't remember <laughs> <laughs> um so you mentioned so we mentioned there obviously seeing we've never seen nicholas cage on a big screen we haven't so to me now i'm like right well i need to go see this film on the big screen because i need to get that get that out of the way and to me that's going to be 
big. So the best cinema experience for me up to date is I got to watch my favorite film of all time on the big screen. Like we're talking an 80s film. So I got to see Die Hard on the big screen. No way. Yeah, they, they brought it out a good few years ago now. Um, They banged it out and I was like, I can't miss this. So I went to, I went to go see Die Hard on the big screen. So That's Nick, so cool. Seeing Nick Cage on the big screen will be a big one for me. So could you imagine, Ryan, going to see one of your favourite 80s movies oh my on God. the big screen? I bloody can because I've done it many a time, you know, <laughs> and I'll you? get to do it again yeah, you tomorrow. Do. What are you going to see, young man? I'm going to see one of my favourite films of all time. It's actually got the number two spot in my favourite films of all time. I group The Lord of the Rings as one. Yeah, that's fair. You know, people can, can't argue with that. It's my world. Yeah. And you're all living in it. So <laughs> they're all, that's The Lord of the Rings. And then it's Aliens. <laughs> 1986, <laughs> James Cameron, sequel to Alien. What a film. What am I, like I said, I fucking love it. Where are you going to see it? I'm going to see it in the cinema in Sheffield tomorrow IMAX. night. I don't think it's in IMAX. It's not the IMAX screen. I don't think it is IMAX. It has been remastered, I think, and it is, most importantly, the extended edition. It's not the theatrical nice. version. Yeah. So it's got the extended scenes, especially the best ones are the sentry guns when they get placed. Um, incredible. I'm so excited. It is, it's a special anniversary, and it's for one night only. That is I mad. I cannot wait. I fucking love that film. Um, I've got, like film still like stills you know you can get like the actual film re- yeah, reel. yeah yeah i've got that i've got some of them at home michael bean what the star in it plays corporal hicks we're gonna meet him in a couple of weeks as yeah, well we at are. comic-con and i can tell him in two weeks time i just saw you on the big screen it's about you. Oh, i love you i love you <laughs> i love you so much give me a kiss yeah i can't wait can't that, wait that's gonna be incredible yeah i, I just want to see you cry i will cry because i got told you don't have tear ducts i don't so i'll have to bring some like like um Eye drops. Eye drop. yeah, yeah, drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't want to look like I'm taking the piss. Yeah, it rubs some like chili in your eye first so they go red as red, well. Red and yeah, then yeah, yeah, put yeah. some drops in. Yeah, and then... If you just have a straight face and water coming from your eye, you'll just look like, you're weep, like you've got weepy eyes. Yeah, no you, one wants that. No, you don't. Um, you, you won't give you a cuddle if you've got conjunctivitis. Exactly. I can't wait. I'm really excited to go see Aliens as well. I'm uh, so excited. I am mega it, jealous. It got announced quite a while ago and I was speaking to our friend Thomas, who, who we work with, that um, he, he saw it ages ago saying it was being brought out and then heard heard very little about it. So I thought, oh, maybe I've missed it or are they going to do like a proper rerun? But then it got announced, yeah, like it was coming out one day only. And we were always joking as well saying, oh, if it's just a theatrical version, I'm not that as fussed. Yeah, yeah. I still probably would have gone see it, but it's always nice when you see one of your favourite films and the, the version of that that you love the most, if that of makes course, sense. Absolutely. Um it might sound a bit snobby, but you want that you always want oh, that of course. you want that per- that that perfect experience, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. Can't wait. I'm so jealous of you, Ryan. Um I've been to see a few of the classics. Have you? What have you been to see? I've seen Blade Runner. Yeah. In the <clears> cinema. I think that was the first like classic film I went to go. Oh no! I say I tell a lie. I went to see Back to the Future at the cinema as well. Nice, yeah. Um, that was, and that was the first time I'd ever seen Back to the Future. No, it was when I was at uni, yeah. Really a big, massive group of us went because um, the cinema was doing like two pound tickets as well. So Bang we in. all went, um, and we like filled like two or three rows. There was loads of people went, and yeah, first time I'd ever seen Back to the Future was in the cinema. That is insane. Which that is, is so good. Yeah, which is really cool. <clears throat> I went to see Blade Runner. Me and Claire went to see it like years and years ago when we first started uh, started going out, and we were the youngest people in there by oh, decades. Really? It was literally like probably men that went to see that when they were our age in yeah, the cinema, yeah, yeah. and then like I want to go see it again. So when they went to see it, so it was a loop, and they're all like on their own. So it was all like single people, <laughs> and it was just like me and Claire, like the only like young and young people and in a couple is that why you got married because you both you both looked around and went we don't want to be these yeah. <laughs> quickly let's get married uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's why i asked claire to marry me because it's like these guys have probably, all their wives have gone fuck off i'm not going to see Blade Runner. yeah <laughs> and claire did and claire did keep her that's why she's a keeper um <laughs> yeah so we did, did that we also went to see a back-to-back screening of mad max one and two you know i've only ever seen mad max one 
Oh, the second one's the best one. I know. It's been on my list for ages, and I've just never got around to it. I will. We'll, we'll do a Mad Max episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we def- definitely, definitely should do that. I did, I, well, I did this a lot with the old podcast. Of I saved a lot of classic films for when we're going to talk about them, because I quite like that I'm talking about it for the first time after the first time watching it. Yeah. Where instead of me watching it now, and then we do a Mad Max episode way down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just wait till we do it, and oh, I'll see yeah. it for the first time. So it's time. fresh, and yeah. then you get that, those emotions and that experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I cannot wait to see that tomorrow. I've seen Alien 1 in the cinema as well. Oh, nice. That was actually a really, really cool experience. So, yeah, we went to, um, we saw it in the Peak District, and it's a village called Castleton. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been. No, no, but no. They've got like all, all like the caverns, like the massive caverns you can go in, like take a boat ride, and it's like all underground oh, stuff. Oh, shit, you told me about this. I remember. Yeah, so it's like, so they do, um, it's like village, it's like, I don't know, like cinema in the village or something, or like, I can't remember the actual title, but basically in the massive entrance to this cavern, looking out, they turn it into a cinema that's insane so yeah you, you, you're in this cave this cavern like the entrance and they put all the seats in there and they get it all lit up and they put like a big massive pop-up screen there and they play nothing but classic classic films um so we went to see alien there and it was amazing watching this classic horror film which was you know iconic in this unbelievable setting and they have like pop-up Stands for like popcorn and stuff, and it's just oh, it was oh so god, so cool. We'll have to do it because they've got oh, a load. Yeah. Um, someone I work with went to Castleton this last weekend for the first okay. time, so we were t- talking about Castleton, and then I, I was like, oh, I, you know, we got chatting about that, and I had a look to see what films have got going at the moment, and I think they're showing The Princess Bride soon, mm-hmm. Goonies, Jurassic Park, Return of the Jedi, <gasps> um, The Lost Boys. Like so many um, amazing films oh, in this, go in this Re- cavern. We've got to go see Return of the Jedi. It looks incredible. So it's, I would recommend it to anyone. So it's Castleton in the Peak District. And yeah, it's worth the trip. Yo, fuck yeah. How far is it from? It's probably about 35 minutes from us or something. Oh, is that like it? That. 35, oh, 40 we'll minutes then. maybe. We'll I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll yeah, have to yeah. do, yeah, we'll do that properly. Yeah, um, awesome. That would be, yeah, so cool. Bang in. Are you uh, are you snackish? I'm, you know, we've been talking a lot. We have, haven't we? And I only had my tea it's half hour ago. Ages ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm hungry. You do look I'm fading like, away. You do look like you're wasting away, bless yeah. you. So uh, should we get should we get our boy Drew in? We haven't heard him for ages either. I know, Drew. Sing us in, baby. Here come Sam and Ryan, listen to them both speak. They've come for hours all with their pop culture critique. But are you even a nerd if you don't overread? So come on, everybody, it's the snack of the week. <sighs> Drew, 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 I miss him. I know, I miss him too. He's Not... busy off being army man. And he is, just... bloody action man. He's having the time of his life by the sounds of it. You know, he's with the paras and he's really enjoying it, but I just miss him so much. Yeah, he, yeah. He came into my life a lot over the last few months until he sort of got moved. Uh, I spoke to him most days and... We did a lot of uh, gaming and stuff, and now we just haven't got the opportunity, and I miss mm. him. Yeah, it's a shame, yeah. Um, yeah, because it was nice. We got into a little bit of a routine, didn't, didn't we, where yeah. like, he was able to come on game with us and stuff, because it's always very hit and miss being in the army and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, Drew, just know we miss you. And yeah. for those of you who don't know who Drew Flanagan is, please go and listen to his music on Spotify or Amazon Music or wherever you listen to your stuff, iTunes, just Drew Flanagan. Is it Drew Flanagan or Drew, Drew Flanagan, Flanagan music? Some place it's Drew Flanagan music, I believe. Yeah. Live at the Foundry, you will find he is uh, balls deep into a studio album at the minute. He's been sending me some stuff, which I'm fucking I loving. I can't wait for that to get released. I'm well like, excited. He's played me like the recording of it, a lot, a lot of the recordings. Yeah, I know yeah. things weren't quite finalised with it, but I was just like, oh my God, I need this. I need this in my life. <laughs> in my life. Just release it already. <laughs> So if you haven't heard it, go listen to it. If you have heard it, we know it's on your playlist. Go listen again. Oh, I played, um, I really shouldn't say this because social service will get involved, but my daughter's obsessed with Ren, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I told you, didn't I? Like, yeah, she's he said. obsessed with his music. Um, we've had to have a few conversations with her <laughs> uh, <laughs> about it. But um, straight after a few Ren songs, Drew's music comes on. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so like where it is in the playlist. 
and the other day common denominator came on and she said to me oh i know she says daddy i know half the so- words to this song and i was singing it to my friend in the playground the other day that's so cute it's so fucking adorable oh, yeah. so drew my five-year-old is singing your music in a playground there you go <laughs> it doesn't get bigger than that my no, friend. no it doesn't right you ready to snack boy i am ready to snack so last week uh, i completely forgot that megan and alex had got us some chocolate bars um so i panicked last minute and made my housemate josh bless him go out and buy the snack of the week <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's a good one he is a good one so he brought it back bless him and then i was like oh shit we've got some so i'll save it for next week so what he brought us was have you ever had jolly ranchers before i haven't you know i used to like jolly ranchers as a, as a kid like what you, are jolly ranchers jolly ranchers they were like hard sucky sweets back in the day but they right. were like the red ones were banging you could get them a lot when I was a kid, but now you have to get them from like an American aisle. Uh, okay. So what Josh has bought us is Jolly, Jolly Rancher Gummy Sours. Okay. Now, I know you're not a gummy fan. I mean, I still eat whatever's in exactly. front of me. Exactly, and the boy knows I am a gummy fan because mm. we just sit here and smash gummies constantly <laughs> together. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about sours because they do make me go... I do also go... A bit pithy. Yeah. what we used to call it. Oh, I've destroyed the bag. So, Ryan, get your fucking gob. Oh, swearing. Oh. Sorry, Ryan's family. <laughs> I'm going to your... go for a blue one. Yeah, the blue ones look good, don't they? Because you know they've got all the uh, all the E numbers in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so this looks like a little mouth, maybe? Uh, oh, are they supposed to be things? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Fuck it. Blue. Blue. Enjoy blue. Cheers. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so sour. It is. But that taste is nice. Uh, oh, I'm a fan. Oh, my days. Now give me a red. Oh, they're watermelon. What was the blue? Um, Blue raspberry. Okay. I'm going to go for a yellow. Ooh. Yellow, obviously lemon. I'm going to go for a green. These are really sour. They are. I love them. They are quite tasty. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. As a man of mine once said, <sighs> Right, I have to do one of every colour. One, Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I've done a more red. bar yellow. What was red? Red was either watermelon or cherry. Oh, God, it's so sour. Um... Lots of mastication with mm. um mm. with these. Josh, come over and have a sweet, mate. You bought them. Josh is just staring out the window because he's ordered food <laughs> longingly. <laughs> he looks like it's like a like a widow looking out to sea to her long lost husband. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, thank you, Josh. They were lovely. Yeah, thanks. Good time. His Uber Eats has just turned up. Perfect. Mm. What was green? Apple. Apple. It does taste quite apply. It does. So blue was my favourite. Blue raspberry was, no, was my blue jam. Was the best, yeah. Um, recommended. Yeah, good. Jolly Rancher gummies. I can guarantee you'll have to buy these down in American Isle, so they'll be fucking well expensive. Yeah. <laughs> what, at what shop would you purchase them from? Josh, where did you get the Jolly Rancher gummy sours from? Sainsbury's. 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 Was it down the American Isle? It was indeed. How much were they? Two pound fifty. Oh, that's, that's a well. Yeah, well, it's quite a small sweet. bag, isn't it? Really, it is, really. Yeah. So there we go. Nice. So Sounds now we've had something to eat. We've got the energy. Uh, full of sugar. We need the energy for the eliminator. The eliminator. Because this is the last round of the quarterfinals. It, yeah, it is. And then we're into the semis. We are. So what are we doing? We've discussed several things with this. Are we going to go straight into the semis, or are we going to have an episode or two break from the eliminator? Well, well, what are you thinking? Well, I had a little thought. Ooh, tell me. Live on air. I think we go straight in. We keep the momentum yeah. going because we've had some controversial decisions. We've had some people agree with us, but we're having a lot of people get involved with the quarterfinals. It's caused a lot of... Yeah, it has. There's been a lot of... Um, interest i've never been called wrong so, so much many my, times not, not even like people aren't just having a discussion with me anymore oh, it's no, just no, no. you are wrong you are wrong you are like, wrong this is Sorry, wrong you're wrong um 
So I, I think it's good to keep that momentum going. Okay, I like straight it. Straight into That's the fair. straight into the semis, into the final. Plus, we're on episode twenty-seven. So then the two semis would be twenty-eight and twenty-nine, and the final episode thirty. Yes, boy, I like your style. You did maths, which. You can't argue with math. Can't argue with math. It's just fact, isn't it? It is fact. It's like it's up there with science and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and philosophy. Here's the eliminator. There can be only one. It is time for the eliminator. It is time for the Eliminator. Yeah, yeah. It's time for the Eliminator. Yeah, are, you ready, are you ready for the Eliminator? Um, yeah, I think I am ready to eliminate yeah. some things from, okay. the, um, from the podcast. Let's get rid of it and we can get ourselves through to the semi-finals. Well, and it's then very exciting. Oh, it's exciting times. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Let's do this! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really hard to do that because I'm fucking jacked up on sugar oh, now. <laughs> sugar, yeah. Just, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm shaking. That went straight to the veins. <laughs> <laughs> So this week, my darling, we have the Black Panther versus the Winter Soldier. Excited? Are, yeah, always excited. Mm. Mm. This one did not go the way I thought. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, and I'll discuss this at the end. Oh, yeah, very interesting responses. Really? Yep. Yep. Very, very, very much so. So, uh, as always, just a little chat. We'll blast through this. Um and then we'll vote, and uh, if we're if we're split, it goes down to the listeners' vote. Yeah, fantastic. So let's start with the Black Panther then. Obviously, Black Panther, as I mentioned in the first episode, was one I was a bit like, oh, I'm not sure I want this in here. It's definitely not my favorite. Like, yeah. I did not enjoy it at the cinema. Blah blah blah. Rewatching it, listening to you talk about it, I really saw what you saw the second time watching it. That's cool. But unfortunately for me, there was a few things that just didn't... Some of the CGI like. was shocking. Like, yeah, especially when you point it out, like we've talked about it before, like yeah. the rhinos were horrendous. Some of the suits weren't great. Like I said, I'm more forgiving of when it's like big, massive landscapes and stuff. And mm-hmm. obviously they've got to have like the green screen, which is not my favourite, but um, it has to be done. But some of them, yeah, it was some of that was terrible. Um, but other than that, I really, really enjoy Black Panther. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to say without just repeating myself. I'm just staring at you. <laughs> I, 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 I was hoping you'd just repeat yourself. I thought if I stare at you long enough, you'll repeat yourself. So I, can I shoot thought you, you down. just like shut down. <laughs> I thought you like... Uh, Quick, give me a sweet. So I was like, pause there. Like, right, uh, all right, put another 50 pence in, in <laughs> Sam. Oh, no. I just wanted you to repeat yourself. That no, I'm it. not going to. Um, yeah, so I don't know. This kind of came in, probably one of the only ones that came in on a bit of a back foot, really. Um, yeah. I'm very glad that it did make it because it made me see it more for what it was um how much i absolutely love killmonger oh, how yeah. much i love daddy circus in it again because i remember him being one of my favorite things yeah um, the bad I, guys in this are oh, almost God, like second to none away apart from maybe thanos but yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah andy circus as well as killmonger in oh, fact they, they yeah they work together and then they, he like betrays him and like oh yeah it's just cool really cool dynamics yeah 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 absolutely um so yeah, I'm glad this this made it through because uh, I needed to rewatch this film and just enjoy it because I don't, especially with the Marvel universe, I don't like disliking a film. It's kind of like just stay with it, enjoy what they've given us. You know, please don't lose it, please don't lose it. And I was a bit worried when I watched that film, but it brought it back to me. And that is going up against arguably one of our favorite. The Winter Marvel Soldier. Films, the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, talk us through it. Like, again, like I, I, one of my all-time favorites. I think what Winter Soldier does very well is it grounds 
Captain America in the modern world. He's like a character that we saw in the past, First World, Second World War, sorry. Then we saw him in the, Ven- the Avengers where he's very much like, oh, a throwback to like the retro, you know, even his suits, like the old retro one. And then, you know, it's lo- that the Avengers is a larger than life film. So then to come into this and ground him in what is essentially a espionage film with some r- incredible action sequences. In a lot of ways, what's different to Black Panther is this is an older film, but looks better. I think the I, CGI I doesn't doesn't look terrible. Obviously, you have the CGI for the the air carriers. Try to think what other CGI they have in it, really, other than Cap throwing his shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the standards, the standard stuff. So, but it's a grown up film. It's clever. You are second guessing each other. It's got that sort of Cold War feel. Bucky is so cool as the Winter Soldier. What an awesome bad guy. It's oh, like, God. again, another one that's like complex because he's like a brainwashed, he's Captain's friend who's been brainwashed, but he's this ruthless killer. Um, even like Robert Redford, who's like, you know, the, the right at the top. Yeah. Who's like the betray, like betray it. Like Nick Fury, really cool in this. Ah, it just ticks all the boxes for me as well as introducing like Falcon I just think it's a really slick, grown-up action superhero film. You know what? Actually, I've not thought of it like, but like a grown-up... Act- yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. This is more of the mature absolutely. type of film that... I don't know, maybe... I, I don't know. I don't have the mind of a child because I'm very mature. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe this wouldn't be like a go-to for the kids. Maybe, maybe no, this I don't is think so. It's more... not like I said. It's not. It's not flashy. It's not showy. It's not like Black Panther. There's like the you know like the music's really cool. It's really modern. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you know, like Kendrick Lamar. You know that sort of vibe, as well as being like rooted in like the like the African tribe stuff, which is really cool. Um, but you know, it's all like flashy cars running in Japan, and like the suits really cool. It's all like high tech. Um, very colourful, mm-hmm. whereas Winter Soldier is a bit more grey and grainy. And oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, it's almost a throwback to those sort of seventies, eighties espionage films. Mm. So, quite different films in that sense. Definitely. Let's so, just do it. Let's just vote. Uh, should we just get it in? Yeah, get it in. Because I think I don't know. I, I don't know how the semis and the finals are going to go. Whether we're going to get a little bit more involved in the conversation or what. But yeah, I want to get there now. Yeah. There's not much more to say about these. Uh, my vote was in immediately. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Um, Winter Soldier for me. Okay. Yeah. All about yourself. Same. Winter yeah. Soldier. And I know I am slightly biased because, well, the point of this is to put off, try and get the, the best Marvel film through. And the reason why the Winter Soldier is one of my favorites is because of all the reasons I've said, because yeah, it is yeah. a great film, in my opinion. I, I'm a big Black Panther fan. I was, like I said, I advocated for them to for Black Panther to be in the um in this in this Eliminator. Yeah, of course. So sorry to see that go. I think it's got a lot of cool things. Like I said, Killmonger, Andy Serkis is really cool. It's it's a very it's a cool film. That's what it's yeah, got going for it. Absolutely. Like I said, let down a little bit by some of the CGI because it is a very CGI heavy film. But character-wise, it's a great driven one. But I just don't think it matches up with the Winter Soldier. No. Now, did the Winter Soldier go up against Civil War? Yes, it, it did, did, didn't it? Yeah. So that, we had a lot of backup from people saying, I agree. Um, it was quite close, if I remember rightly, but we didn't get the bullshit we're getting at the minute of, yeah, getting, oh, to, I know, of yeah. getting told off a lot. But people's like, no, I see where, where you're coming from. It's such a great film, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I was expecting... I knew you and me, it was a whitewash for Winter Soldier. Yeah. I was expecting the same from the listeners. Really? Instagram was 50-50. Okay. Which I was like, I did not see that coming. No. Um, Winter Soldier did tip it. Right. Um, by... Duh, duh, duh. I mean, it tipped it by like three, four points. Okay. But when I went on immediately, before I sort of tallied up Facebook and then the comments and stuff, I was like, shit, this has got 50. I did not see this coming. Yeah. Do you know, I yeah, thought it no, would be yeah. an absolute whitewash. But again, I think that's all those reasons we said. You know, Black Panther is a, it, a lot of people love it. It's a cool film. It's it, I think Black Panther is one that you could probably more easily stick on than The Winter Soldier. Absolutely. Because of all those reasons we said. Um, and 
I do think that when people forget about the Winter Soldier because it was like uh, it was Phase Two, so it was a long time ago now. You know, Black Panther's a much more modern one compared to that. And I don't think you, you don't go back as far. I, well, I certainly don't find I go back as far as often. You know, if I'm to stick a Marvel film on it, you go more recent. They go, oh, I'll stick on Infinity War or maybe go a little bit further back, like Thor Ragnarok. You don't very often go, oh, I'm going to stick Thor 1 on. Because why would you? <laughs> why would but, you ever? Um, you yeah, know exactly. what I mean? Or a good one, like <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, cool. So that means that Winter Soldier is into the semi finals. So next week we hit semi finals run in with Guardians of the Galaxy versus Thor Ragnarok. Oh. This is a biggie. I think we're going to see some scraps in this one. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking forward to watch people fight. Yeah, I think no matter what we pick now, we're going to get grief. Hundred percent. I mean, we've been getting a lot of grief we've anyway. We're getting a lot of grief, haven't we? Yeah, we're yeah. just kind of used to it now. We're just wrong. Yeah, and that's got nothing to do with the podcast. We just get told it a lot. Yeah, by exactly. People. Yeah. Now we're giving people more ammunition. Yeah, at least just... people are telling me I'm wrong and not weird looking because that's what it was before. Well, yeah, there's always you know that I mean? positive. Yeah, yeah, silver lining and all that. Exactly. Right then, to end this episode, I brought something. What did you bring? So. I was flicking around through Facebook recently. So I listened to Shits and Gigs podcast, which I'm a big, big, big fan of. And a big thing they do is they do like Instagram threads. Uh, they do a question, random question like, oh, I don't know. Um, how did you know you was being cheated on? And then they'd read all the answers out. And quite, some of them are quite funny. And I come across one on Facebook that I was like, I really like this, and I think it would spark quite a bit of conversation with you and me. Okay. Um, it was on the PlayStation page, and it was your biggest gaming regrets. Interesting. Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? As in, well, give I'll, me, I'll give go. Give me some for examples. For examples. So, the first one I'll come to, someone wrote, playing FIFA and forgetting about other games. So, for me. Right. Okay, go on. That is a big no. Never done that. So, Never. I've never been a FIFA fan. Like, obviously, I'm not a football fan. What, like, what about yourself? I know you are a football fan. I played you at FIFA and lost. I used to be obsessed with FIFA. Um, for me, never, not really in terms of like that. Like, it's never taken over my life. It was, um, for me, FIFA was always a social game. So at uni, we'd always play each other, like, never online, but we'd always play each other like in the same living room because obviously yeah, we all yeah, live, yeah. live together with our, all our mates so we'd have like FIFA tournaments or that was our pre-drinking what we did was we used to pre-drink to FIFA yeah. and get, came up with a FIFA drinking game and get absolutely battered to it before we went out so that was always a social thing so it, you know if whoever's in the house it's like oh should we stick FIFA on yeah but that was the era of gaming where we we were massive into games so we were that's like the era of like game station you know yeah. where you just go down you can pick up a new brand new game for like 20 quid uh -huh. and you and so we just rinse through games after games um and then i played it to a lesser extent when i left uni i played like ultimate team and stuff a little bit but then quickly stopped doing it and i haven't played it for years and years yeah I, I, the the reason for me why i screen because i just screenshotted loads and loads and loads of comments uh the reason i <clears throat> screenshot this one specifically is because this is me this is me right now with COD. Yeah. Of I've got a hundred games on the go. Or oh, I've yeah. Bought, I mean, I started Red Dead 2 and I was loving it. I don't touch anything anymore because all I do is play COD. Yeah. I know. I do get that. I do have that where I, you become obsessed with one game and forget everything else. Yeah. Um, ooh, uh, again, I don't think I've been too bad for that. Because even as a kid, like I play like Halo like even this is before the get the days of online gaming. So let's say yeah. Drew came to stay at my house, we'd smash Halo and play every mission like split screen. But then as soon as he left, I'd go back on like the RPG game. So I'd go on like Fable or something, yeah, 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 or like Oblivion. Um, so I've always generally had like a role playing single player game on the go as well yeah, as yeah, online. Yeah. And then recently, yeah, we have become obsessed with COD. But I think that as you, when you have less time to play games, that's the reason why. Definitely. Um, yeah, because we used to have a quite a good rotation, didn't we? It's like, even last night, we played Rocket League and then went on back onto COD. And yeah. 
Yeah. It's nice to have a variety. Of course it is. Uh, so the next one, actually, we mentioned earlier on. I don't know if I'd call it gaming, but it's a card game. I can't believe I sold all my first edition Pokemon cards. <laughs> Could you imagine the money we'd have if oh, we wouldn't have got rid of them bits of shitty cardboard yeah. that we just didn't need? I don't think I ever had any great cards. We, I don't think any of mine blew me away. I can't I can't think of a single card had that I specifically three. had. Yeah, between me and my brother, we had the big three. Oh, yeah, Jarazard, we never did. Um, Venusaur and Blastoise. Yeah, we never had any of them. Oof. So I don't think our Pokemon cards were, even now, probably weren't aren't worth a lot. Uh, the next game in regret is playing World of Warcraft all my life. <laughs> my regret is I've not played it enough. <laughs> <laughs> So you're not there with Nikos Dig Chaos? Uh, no. No, Nikos. I, I did, it did take over my life at one point, second year of uni. Um, I think I've said this before, where I stayed up to like three in the morning with my friend Ash, um, fucking yeah, yeah, going yeah. into dungeons when I had an exam at eight o'clock in the morning. So it did become worrying for me at one point. Yeah. But then it quickly died a death because you have to pay a monthly subscription for it and having a PC. and <laughs> Of course. It's not something you can just stick on for half an hour to yeah, an hour yeah exactly um this next one i screenshot for you because i don't actually know what it means but i'm sure you do okay falling into the trap of spending hours playing coin games in fable ah coin <laughs> games in fable so there was in fable one yeah what you could do is you could go play blackjack in darkwood so in darkwood it's a nasty scary forest but you could go in there and there was a little camp halfway through Darkwood where some traders had set up camp and it was a little bit safe from the dark, scary wood. And there was a blackjack blackjack table there. Not coins, but it was blackjack. And you could bet on that. And I used to play that all the time. So really? it was almost like a hack. What I'd do is I'd save it before I go there. I'd bet all my money, hope I'd win. And if I'd win, I'd save it and then play it again. And if I lost... I'd reload it and oh, really? I basically used to do that. So I'd get loads of money. I'd do that. It was, became like a bit of a hack. This was before like fucking Googling stuff because I was like bloody 12 years old. I'd run from the starting place right to Darkwood, even though you're not supposed to go there yet you're like too low a level. Go make loads of money, then run back to the start, buy loads of awesome armor that was way that I would never have been able to afford to start <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, yeah. and then, then play everything. the story, and I've just destroyed everything. <laughs> um, but I never became obsessed with like the because you like could do like the coin flicking things right, right like, across okay. like a beer table and stuff. But they never took over. But Fable One Blackjack did. Yeah. yeah. Um, next one, I've got handing over my original PlayStation to get fixed. I'm still waiting 26 years later. <laughs> Uh, do you have that did you have that i did that with a motorbike <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. so i had this really shit so god it was 26 years old at the time i was 25 yeah so it'd be 36 year old now this honda h100 right it looked like the kind of bike you'd see in the background of a heartbeat episode oh god okay oh, god, yeah. it was a little 100 cc pot pot type thing yeah full kickstart it was disgusting but oh, i needed right. it for work and uh i kicked the kickstart off it Oh. <laughs> took it to a garage passed my driving test like so i was supposed to get it back didn't get it back when they said never heard from him again but then i passed my driving test so i never i, oh, ne I never heard from him and i never went back that's ridiculous that 10 should, years ago you should go see him <laughs> I don't, that garage isn't there anymore oh but, no excuse me is my honda h100 here <laughs> i don't know what ever happened to our original playstation i don't know what happened to it no i don't either God knows, probably just chucked out. Oh, you, my mum my, my probably sold it at a car boot. That's it. They probably all got sold at a car boot for a fiver. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it, when you think. It's like, oh, God, it's the PS3 now. What would we want them for? Keep everything. Be a hoarder. I understand hoarders now. Yeah, I've still got all my Xbox consoles. I've got yeah, the original one. I've got a 360. All of them. Yeah. A one, one and an X. X. I've got them all as well. Yeah. Yeah, and not got rid of them. Only because I, excuse me, I love the Punisher game and I've got that oh, for the right, original okay. nice. Xbox, so I kept it. Next one I am totally about, Aliens Colonial Marine. I pre-ordered it. I've never pre-ordered a game since. That game was dog shit. It has a soft place Does in it? my oh, heart. Oh, God, I fucking hated it. I hated right. it. I found it so boring. The story wasn't great, but what I, I totally was bias because it had michael bean who we've already spoke about this episode oh yes we have the legend he came back to voice hicks oh did he yeah and the story 
was a reimagining of three Alien Three, the film. <laughs> Obviously, Alien oh, Three God. is fucking garbage. Awful. Um, I spoke about this before because they've done it in many ways. Because I, th- I spoke. I don't know, a few episodes ago. Remember I spoke about the audio book where they've redone Alien 3 and it's Michael yes. Bean voicing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this game was another re- reimagining of Alien 3 where Hicks survived and Michael Bean voiced it. And it was it was very disappointing. Like, it was cool to see him. I was like, oh my God, and he, like listen to him. But it, it was very flat. And you could yeah, tell yeah. he was not... Uh, he was not happy. And I've since read that he said it was like a heartless experience and that really put him off. That's why he never... That's, I think that's why he... he Really, nearly didn't do the audio book. Really, oh, because God. it was like he had a miserable experience on this game where oh, they were just wow. like the producers just didn't give a shit. How um, weird! You don't expect to hear that from a voice actor, yeah. on a game, do you? Well, it's because he's he's a character that's near and dear to him, like one of his well, most yeah. iconic roles. <laughs> you know, he's a cult, massive cult character, Absolutely, really. Yeah. Um, but then I think what he when he realised that the book was more like a labour of love, it was a night, almost a way of erasing colonial marines but kyle and i used to play it online all the time and oh, that was you? quite fun so that was like where you the marines versus the aliens he took it in turns to beat control different ones oh, so the cool. online was actually quite fun um wasn't it wasn't amazing by any stretch of the imagination but it was there's something so satisfying when you've got a pulse rifle with that iconic noise that it fires yeah. and you just got guys controlling aliens coming at you and you're just like oh my god we're gonna die like it was just, it was a laugh. Not a great game, but again, it's like anything. When you're playing with your friends, you can, yeah, you, so, can yeah. you can have a laugh. And like Aliens Fireteam Elite is not a great game either. No, I guess it's not, is it? It's it, very short. It's very short. It's very one dimensional, but that's what mine, yours and Kyle's friendship was forged on. Literally, that yeah. Literally how, how I met Kyle. Yeah. And that, that was the first thing we ever did outside of work. Yeah. Like we'd said for ages, oh, we should do some gaming or something. And then we finally, finally sorted it and played Aliens Fireteam Elite. Madness. Madness. Right, next one. Brink. Did you ever play Brink? I'd never pr- played Brink. Brink was a game for the PlayStation, like a shoot 'em up, that everybody who owned a PS3 owned Brink. And I'll tell you for why, because it was a fiver three days after release. Oh, right. In every shop you went to. So everyone just bought a copy of it. Because I was like, oh, it's a fiver. It can't be that bad. It was bad. Really? I did that with, oh, God, what was it called? Home, something Homecoming. Um, I can't remember. Something Homecoming. It was so bad for a fiver. Uh, next one, letting life get in the way of playing. Yeah. And life does get in the way of playing. All the time. Which feeds really nicely with the next one, which is not appreciating the time I had when I was younger. As you know, I couldn't, I couldn't afford a lot of games. Now I can buy them all the time, and I can't play them. Yeah. So they come hand in hand, really. Because it's true, you know, we're older now. We've got lives. It'd be great to sit and play and just really smash into a game that oh, you absolutely, absolutely love. But I know. We ain't got time for that. And let's be honest, if we was doing that all the time, we'd wor- we'd be worrying what we're doing with our lives. Yeah. Because that's me right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't be. I think if I ever had the time to just sit and play games, I'd be like. I'm winning at life. (laughs) This is life now. I'm playing the game of life. Sorry, Claire. (laughs) Ah, Never mind. A dream. It is but a dream. Uh, We've got another getting rid of old consoles. Oh, okay. Swapped SNES for a Mega Drive was his biggest gaming regret. How do you feel about that? Mega Drive or SNES? I never had a SNES. Did you not? You want a Nintendo boy? No, we never had a Nintendo at all. We had we had wow. a Sega Mega Drive, and then we went straight to PlayStation. And Interesting. Then PS One, PS Two, and then I swapped to Xbox, and I've been Xbox ever since. Interesting. You see, I wouldn't know what to get. I, I think I was Mega Drive over SNES. Right. Yeah. Because I'll be honest with you, growing up now, this I desperately wanted to switch at one point, and about, I think it's just because it was new. Yeah. Then when I really sat down, I was like, but you don't really like Nintendo games. Mm. They don't bring anything out, really. And the stuff that you would buy for it is stuff you can buy on the Xbox. Yeah, okay. You know, like they had Doom on it. And it's like, well, I own Doom on yeah. the Xbox. So yeah, yeah, why yeah. do I need that? Well, that's what I mean. Like some of the Resident Evil games, it's like they could only get them on Nintendo or yeah. Dreamcast oh, or something. Dreamcast, there's a Dreamcast. But one um, you can get them on everything now. Yeah, of course. Was it Codename Veronica was the only one on Dreamcast? I think so. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, this is some of my friends through and through buying shark cards for GTA Online to basically coins in right. Uh, to, oh, this yeah. is you on fucking uh, Call of Duty. Whenever whenever you go quiet, it means that you're. Fa- 
I thought Sorry, you, I needed I, to sneeze for a long buying, time. I thought he was buying coins on uh, Call of Duty <laughs> then. <laughs> you went that quiet. I do like to buy some skins <laughs> on Call of Duty. Yeah, I've got a friend of mine, Spuggy, who, like, we, I know he did it with shark cards on GTA, but Call of Duty, the biggest one you can get is like 120 quid. Oh, and he's yeah. had like five of them. Fucking hell. Yeah, like, he owns everything. Well, yeah. Never played with him online. <laughs> you know, and you're like, what'd you buy them for then? Because you've never played with me and I'm on it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, I bet I'm, I'm a, jealous. Yeah, I bet I'm a higher level than him too. Uh, this one fucking blew my mind. I reached the final mission on GTA Vice City and then my exams came and life happened, so I never completed oh, it. Oh, no. Did you play Vice City? A little bit. I never got into it massively. Vice City is, to this day, my, one of my favourite games. Right. The end scene, you've taken over Vice City you're in this massive mansion. You take them all down. It's basically a rip-off of Scarface. Oh, okay. That's it's cool. It's such a wicked, like, end scene slash... Um, oh, God. It, that honestly broke my heart when I read that. I was like, you never finished Vice City. Yeah, that's Once devastating. Once you own that mansion. Oh, that is absolute madness. Yeah, see, I've never really got into the GTA games. I've had a couple of them, but I always get distracted and just, like, shoot people and then, yeah, yeah, then yeah. run around that's why I love avoiding it. the police. But So I never do the story, ever. Yeah. One out, one out of three times I play, I'm on for two hours just shooting people, getting as many stars as I can. Yeah. So that was another weird thing as well. Actually, no, I'll save it because I think it is on here. So you never played GTA Five then? I did play GTA Five. I used to play it online more than I did the story. Did you finish the story? Oh, no. That's what I mean. I've never right, never okay. got anywhere near a story completion. Because there's GTA. another one here, which is Killing Trevor on my first time playing GTA Five. I feel so bad today. You have the option of killing Michael, Trevor, or not killing anyone. Right, okay. Basically killing the bad guy. Yeah. You always go with the bad guy. Oh, yeah. You don't kill your boy. So the fact that this bastard Gareth Berger, whatever his name is, killed Trevor, don't like him. Uh, see, I've had that on um, on Fable 1, the expanded edition, so it's Fable the Lost Chapters. You have to, like, collect souls at the end. And so, like, depending on, because Fable's all about your choices, like, good or bad. So there's one where you can go to like the arena and get some like dead old evil like warlord or whatever, or yeah. you can go kill the guild master. So the guild master is the guy that's been by your side since you were a little kid and he's guided you every time. He's always the one that says, oh, here's your quest. You need to do this. Come, come visit us. So he's like, and he's like this kind old man, with like a cool mustache, like bald head. And there's an option to kill him. I did it once and I still feel bad now. And every time I played it since, I'll I will ne- even if I play an evil character, won't kill him. I won't kill him. I'll kill the evil guy instead. <laughs> yeah, I like I'm like that. I can't do it. I did it once and it broke my heart. His 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 poor little face. <laughs> I betrayed him. <laughs> did you play Fallout Three? Again, only a little bit, not a lot. So there's a scene. There's a um like shanty town in that called Megaton, and it's yep. around a massive bomb. Yes, and at the end you. Uh, sort of half a fruit you can decide whether to blow the city up and someone's was i blew up megaton oh, with a sad face yeah you don't blow that shit up there's no. people there this next one is heartbreaking accidentally trampling a dog in red dead redemption 2 Oof. on that horsey and you tramp oh, i've done it oh dear i've done it bro it's not nice because you don't get back up no every time i've gone over to it i'm like you're all right bro oh he's no he's dead man he's dead it's sad it's sad this is one I want to get to for a chat. Put in a cheating every time I got stuck on Tomb Raider 1. So for this, now, being a big like GTA fan growing up, I cheated the shit out of games. Mm. Cheats and everything. GTA massively. Like, if you had five stars, you put in a cheat, you got rid of the stars. Yeah. You always had, like, full health. You always had the best guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could not imagine picking up a game now and putting a cheat on. Oh, no, not at it's all. It's just kind of what it was growing up. Was it that I was too young for games or were games harder then? I don't know. But... I don't know either. That but was always remember... a massive thing, though, wasn't it? Cheats, yeah. you could just cheat, but I... now you just... nothing like that. I remember thinking back then, I would never, ever, ever win GTA Vice City without, without cheats. cheats. And I think I'd like to go back and play it now to see if I would. Mm. Now I'm a proper, like, back then I want a gamer gamer. But yeah. Now I like it more. Um, not switching to PC sooner. Yes, Hados. I haven't got the money to, unfortunately. You'd like to, though, wouldn't you? Well, you'd like to, though, maybe. wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> this one is... I want to see where you stand on this one. Losing touch with old friends you only knew online. 
Did you have that? Did you have any boys that you may, met whilst playing maybe one of your favourite online games? I think so, yeah. Like you, I've got a big, long friends list on Xbox because you don't like... Oh, well, I've never like gone through and deleted old like friends or whatever. And it's so devastating when you just click through, it just says offline. Because it used sometimes like for people that have been on recently, it's like oh, last online 24 hours ago, last yeah. online three days three ago, ago, or like, a couple of weeks ago. But then it, when it gets to a certain cutoff, it just says offline. So I just flick through that and it's like, I've seen people do it. I see like some like TikTok videos, or whatever. And it's just play, like people flicking through that. And we're just like this devastating music playing. And then someone just turns his Xbox off and walks away. I'm like, oh my God, it's me. It's so devastating. <laughs> yeah. You see, <coughs> I never did that because, <coughs> excuse me, I've only recently got into online gaming. Right. So I avoided it like the plague. Me and my friend Aaron was big into Black Ops 2. But we never like had headsets on or ever spoke to anyone. Like yeah. we just played with each other. Um you know, me and my boys would do like horde on Gears One and Gears Three and stuff, but never played with online people. It's only been recently. So I still find the concept very strange. I never used to talk to people online really. There's only like a couple when we were younger, but again, we'd only do that if there was other friends online. Yeah. I've never just like if I'm online on my own now, I my headset's not even plugged in. Yeah. Um so it's- growing up or it's plugged in so I don't and then not on my head so I don't hear bloody other people talking yeah yeah because you know, i don't want to come through the tv but then like just certain people like you just message it like oh fancy another game or whatever i'm yeah. like oh yeah sure and then you'd have people that way yeah i, I want to get into it more now we've got proxy chat on call of duty so i had a game recently i streamed and the last guy i was like i'll have one game of cod i've been playing rocket league before i go to bed and i forgot to turn group chat off and i forgot to turn off squad phil because i don't like squad phil either yeah and I just joined this team, and this dude was like, "We got mics." I was like, "Oh yeah, hey!" And I think I told you about it. Yeah, because yeah, Arsenal lost, and it was actually quite good fun. So I'd yeah. like to go into it. So my friend Kareem, years ago, long, long time ago now, he it was his birthday, uh, and his partner at the time had booked like a pool hall. Was all going for beers and pool and all this sort of stuff. And he had two friends that he knew from playing Gears of War online. That was it. He'd known them for like ten years That's of playing incredible. Gears of War online, and she invited them to come from like London to stay over at the house and like meet Kareem for the first time. Dude, I've never seen anything like it. The bromance, the immediate bromance of when he was just like, who are these two? And it's like, oh, it's Fozzie and such and such. And he was like, like I got goosebumps watching it. Yeah. I was yeah, just like, yeah. oh my, could you imagine? Like they, he genuinely classed them as friends. Yeah. But he never met them. Yeah. yeah and this yeah, first crazy. time you met these people, I was like, that's fucking insane, dude. I So I'd never heard of him before. Just that he knew, I knew he played with these guys. And then after meeting them, I added them and we had a few games. Yeah, they were good. Like, real nice lads. Um, Next one. So just to remind you, we are doing biggest gaming regrets. Next one is buying We Happy Few. Did you ever play We Happy Few? I did not, no. That game looked the tits. Well, I don't even know what it was. It was basically a game about you live in a society where everyone is just doped up on antidepressants and they basically turn you into, like, robots. You do exactly as you're told by the government. Yeah. Like, when you take these pills you know everything's all bright and happy but really when you come off the pills everything's glum and dirty and horrible all the cops wear these like white masks with smiles on oh yeah um so the whole thing is you're trying to escape and take down like the government and you have to like take these pills occasionally just to fit in so you can like infiltrate shit but the look of it was like oh my god you stop taking these pills and everything's so dark and horrible and then when you take them everything's so cool what a great concept for a game. It was shit. Oh, was it? Did not enjoy it. That's I really tried. It's on Game Pass, I'm sure it is. Right. But for a concept and how it looked, I was so excited for this coming out. Yeah. And it just didn't, just the gameplay didn't deliver, unfortunately. Shame. Now, this takes us back, my friend. Overwriting save data. Oh, oh. That's hard. When you have put in, I don't know, the only Final Fantasy I really, really got into, I think, was seven or nine. I can't, seven, I think it was. And I remember saving over my fa- save data on that. Oh my God. World end. Yeah. World ended. I'm done. I'm done with life. Everyone get away from me. Yeah. <clears throat> Having my PS3 with all my photos and music on it, and then it getting the yellow light of death. Did you ever have an Xbox that got the red ring? Red of ring death? and death. I did, yeah. The, I didn't read the 
uh, subject matter, but they shared recently on Unilad, Xbox have finally explained what the Red Ring of Death was. Oh, uh, okay. I, I never read it because I was just like, I don't want to know. All I know is you pissed me off because I must have had two or three consoles that got that. Yeah. So as soon as that red light comes on, you're going, fuck! I know. That's it, game over. Just devastated. Yeah. Marvel Avengers. Did you play that? I didn't. One of the worst games I've ever played. Oh. It's just the same the same level over and over again. Oh, God. It's, oh, God, it's so, so bad. So many disappointing games, isn't there, really? I'd say we're more disappointed by games than we are blown <laughs> away. Um, this one's quite a good one. All the gameplay footage that went unpublished. How many times have you played and been like, that was amazing. Yeah, no one will ever see it. Oh, no. That's why I started streaming. Uh, yeah, to be I, fair, I'm pretty good for getting my videos. You are I good always, for it. I'm always taking videos. Even if random ones, like last night, we I got a, like a double kill. When we were getting the exile and the chopper, I jumped, jumped above and killed two guys. Well, I'll get a video of that because it might look cool when I play it back. Yeah, exactly. I'm, that's all, th- I'm always doing it. That's the thing. I don't know how to do it on here. So the stream's for me and I've like set up this thing so I can click a button and it'll record the last 20 seconds. Yeah. But I've also done it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we've had some bad ones, but I've also added this plugin. So it'll record the last 20 seconds horizontal and vertical. Right, okay. So I can That's then cool. share it on like Instagram. So yeah. our Instagram reels oh, nice. for the podcast, That's if we cool. get good ones, yeah. I can record it and put them on there. Because obviously if it's horizontal, horizontal, it looks shit. Yeah. So um, hopefully, fingers crossed, guys, when we do get into streaming a bit more, we'll be able to bang up a few like videos That'd be cool. playing. That'd be really good fun. Uh, someone put, buying anything COD. You know what? I kind of agree. Because I love COD. That was the biggest waste of 60 quid I've ever had. Yeah, the storyline was good. The storyline was good. But it was yeah. about two hours long. Yeah. We don't do enough of the online stuff. I don't really play like the multiplayer Killer stuff. House or whatever it's called, Slaughterhouse. And all. I do occasionally if I'm on my own, but I just prefer DMZ yeah, and Battle Royale. I know. Yeah. I, I feel, they are the best modes and they're I the free modes. I feel more accomplished getting far in a Battle Royale than I do coming top. I don't care if I come top or bottom of a kill confirmed. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I agree. And for the price of it, they don't come down, so it doesn't matter. I know. So I'm paying 60 quid. Yeah, no, I'm kind of for that. Killing the Chicken in Ocarina of Time. Never played it. Did you not? No. Uh, yeah, I did. I, in fact, I probably started replaying that two years ago, because I've got an old Game Boy upstairs. Oh, yeah. And I started playing Ocarina of Time again. Fuck me. I don't know how I did it as a kid. It's impossible. <laughs> Some Game Boy games are impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I bought a Dragon Ball Z one. And I had to download a how-to guide to do it. Really? Yeah. This was when I worked in the prison. I was doing like a lot of nights. So I had t- <laughs> to take a Game Boy in with me. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was sitting there playing like all these old games and shit. Yeah, I had to down. I had to download and print off how to, right, go up here, go forward three steps, and then randomly you'd be able to walk through a cave that no one knew you could, and yeah, real random stuff. Uh, microtransactions pay to play as we've sort Talked of about, yeah. already. Buying the PS2 Slim model over the original one. That, oh, please. Um, that was a big phase, wasn't it? Of just bringing the same thing out, but, but just smaller. smaller. And people so, being like, I want that. Yeah, people want all sorts, though, don't they? And I went, you bring up out anything, someone will want it. But I suppose that was around the time as well. Can you remember how cool you was if you had the smallest phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a tiny, tiny, tiny yeah. little one. Like It was literally like that big at one yeah. point. And the, you, that was the whole point. The smaller, the better. And now it's the bigger, the better. I know. It's absolutely Brief. madness, isn't it? Bloody society. The bloody society. Um, this one is just a meme, and it's a picture of Lara Croft's triangle boobs, and then a picture of Stone Cold Steve Austin saying, why did I fap to this? <laughs> 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 now, I remember, mate, looking at them pointy boobs back in the day and being like, bro? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, bless Ooh. her. Pointy boobs, eh? Uh, then someone put spending too much time gaming. I love gaming, but at the same time, we are wasting our lives. Totally disagree. Totally disagree. That was Sean Newton. If you want to go after him, everyone. Like it. Surely life's about enjoying yourself and having exactly. fun. Exactly. And if, if you, you if you gaming, love gaming and enjoy it, how is that different to? I don't know what what do people do for fun? Game. There you go. There you go. Yeah. How's gaming different to gaming? You idiot. Yeah. Fucking, Fucking hell. Sean Newton. Uh, Locking the butler in the freezer on Tomb Raider 2. We oh, all did that. Oh, we all did it. We all did that, and we all played Sim City, put someone in the swimming pool, and then removed the ladder out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course we did. Course do you know we why? Because we were evil yes. back then. We were horrible little shits. I'll do you know it what? again. Yeah, I'll do it again. <laughs> 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 um, 
here we are as old boys wearing glasses, mate. Bad eyesight from playing too much. Yeah. That, that ain't good, I mean, I've it? always had to wear glasses, so, you know, why not? It's Just m- embrace it. I've got bad eyes. Let's make them worse. Uh, then <laughs> someone just put letting dad inappropriately touch me whilst I played Tenchu. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> I know. Uh, <gasps> sold my PS Vita. I, to this day, still want a PS Vita. I never had a PS Vita. No, me neither. I had a PS... What was their mother handheld one? P? PSP. I had a PSP because um, you could buy them UMD discs. Can you remember? They had oh, films on bloody them. Hell. Oh, yeah. yeah. I vaguely remember that, actually. And yeah. I bought this like way after they were cool. So I'd pick up like, like SWAT the film for like 50p in CX. Right, and yeah. then, again, watch them on nights at work. And That's shit. cool, yeah. Um, but then I really wanted a PS Vita, but they're still, especially now, so they never went down in price and now they're kind of retro. So, they're so just they even got bumped again. in price. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Someone put having kids. Yeah, I yeah. kind of agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. How many times I've played with you and Little has got up and I'm like, gotta go, guys. Yeah, I know. Um, spending £100 on Mortal Kombat 11 at launch for a PG-13 fighting game. I'll never understand anyone that spends a hundred pound on a fighting game. No, I mean, fair enough. It's not my style. It's not my style as well. I feel like again, they're quite fun if you're just social. Just like, but for me, they've always been button mashing games. Basically, yeah. Right. I know it's, some people are really good at them. And of shit, course, they're going to be, but it never interested me those games not at all. Um, so the last fighting game I bought, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or whatever it was called, and I only paid twenty quid for it. And after playing it for two hours, I was like. I've got everything I can out of yeah. this. I've I've played as Goku. I've killed everyone I wanted. That's that. Uh, Luke Omar report adding my card details. I've definitely suffered with that. I have. Shit. I've got it a wasn't... lot of skins on yeah. Call of Duty, especially if I've had a beer or two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if it wasn't on there, you wouldn't buy. Because no, by that true. point, we're too lazy to go get a wallet. Yes. Aren't we? Uh, and then, oh, bloody hell. And then the last one, when I became a manager at McDonald's, at 19 years old, I bought a Dreamcast for everyone in the staff room to play. Some fucker stole it. You know, bastard. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like, you're a kid. You're like, I'm going to buy a console yeah. for my peeps to play whilst they're on break. And then some fucker robs it the next day. Oh, that's devastating. That is proper devastating. That's heartbreaking, that. Um, so, yeah, that's all of them. I just thought that, that was quite a cool little... Um, yeah, yeah. What's your biggest gaming regret? Can you think? Oh, what I have a tendency to do is I get bored quite quickly on things. So if I invest a lot of time into a game and then never complete it, I've done that so many times. Me too. Um, and I, I do regret that. There's a lot of games that I got so close to the end and just stopped playing. Um, I'm trying to think one recently. Well, even like Call of Duty, the campaign, I started, I smashed it all um, when it first came out. I didn't play the last mission until... This weekend. Which was bad. Yeah. And it was, I was a just bad like, last mission. You should have stopped. I, I know, but I was just like, well, I, I've only got one mission left. Why haven't I completed it? <laughs> no, like, what we're really, doing? Right? Um, you know, some really cool games as well. Have you ever played like, Ori in the Will of the Wisps? I haven't, but I've heard really good things about yeah, it. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like a really beautiful game. It's like your sort of old platform style game, but it's obviously modern. It's set in a forest. It's really, really nice game. The soundtrack's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So like, beautiful and like therapeutic but like haunting at the same time it's really mm. really good but it's actually a hard hard game and there's one mission where you have to get up this waterfall i rage quit so many times really? and this was during <laughs> lockdown as well because it's it was rock solid and i never completed it that one to be fair to, to myself it wasn't because I just got bored and stopped playing it. It's because the last, I think I was right at the end of this last mission and it was near impossible. Re- that, Bear that in mind, hard. I'm a pretty, like, I'm not a great gamer, but I know what I'm doing. I would say I'm a decent level of oh, gaming. Yeah. Look at Resi 1, mate. Yeah, fucking smashed it. Like, so if I put my mind to it, I can do it. But actually, actually, it was rock, like next level rock solid. Insane. And then, like, but the problem now is because I was you're so specialized because you've got all these different abilities and you know what you're doing. You've got to do it all specific times. I would never be able to do that now. No. I would have to start the whole game again. Oh, definitely. I, I'm like that at the minute with the uh, <coughs> Star Wars Fallen, Fallen Order, was it? Jedi Fallen Order. That one. 
I have restarted that game four times yeah. because I get into it where you need to be of a good skill level, then stop playing it that I can't go back. That's it. And I'm I now know. at the stage of, I don't want to start it again. And it's hard, isn't I it? Because, be yeah, I know. You lose those skills. I'm the same because I obviously I smashed Resident Evil 1 to death last year. I must have played it completely like eight, nine times back to back doing all the different achievements, the different storylines, different really, um, speed runs and all sorts. But And I had like two achievements left to get, which was like one which was playing it on the hardest difficulty, like real survivor mode or something. And another one was completing it with invisible enemies. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and if I'd carried on, I would have right. done it. Yeah. But now um, it's, I'll be starting from scratch again because that's a hard game to pick up because of the old camera angles and yeah, like the tank project. controls whereas i was i was almost a pro at it last year I, last i could have completed that game in two hours yeah with no guys so like oh, yeah, yeah. like from start to finish now oh yeah it's just i wouldn't have a clue no definitely i think for me it would be not getting into open world games sooner uh, okay yeah. because i hated them this is why i loved gears of war so much because i think i mentioned this before um you can only go one way you yeah, couldn't go the yeah, wrong yeah. way. That's why I like them. That's why I like the COD games um, when I was younger. Because again, you can only go one way. But I now like open world games, but I don't have the attention span for it. Right. I, mean, I think that's yeah. the world we live in anyway. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We live in a world full of like quick we want quick, quick, like like Rocket League. We're five minute game and then yeah. you're instantly into another one. The longest you're waiting is 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. And everything in world, everything on it. I mean, TikToks, we enjoy... 30 second videos. Yeah. Anything and, longer, he's switching it off. Yeah, absolutely. I know. But, so there's that, but then never having the attention span in the first place because I needed something easy that I could just follow and just get through. Yeah, I get that. So I think if I was more into it when I was younger, I'd be I'd be completing these games I've started. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, it, yeah. uh, it was Far Cry 3 that got me into it. Oh, was it? And I was yeah. like, oh, I haven't got to be told what to do. I can actually do what I want. And then such sort of games, I don't do the storyline on. That's like, me with GTA. Yeah, I just go around and I just do all the side missions. And then when it gets to the point, there's not really anything else to do. I'll then do the storyline mission. So when it comes to Far Cry 5, which I love, one of my favorite games, you've got all the different bad guys in the different regions. You can only do so many side missions before they force you to face the bad guy. Oh, okay, that's quite so cool. So every, like, I don't know, say 20 side missions you do, you hit a milestone where you'll be walking and you'll just be captured by the bad guy. There'll be a cutscene. You have to escape. Ah, uh, okay. So it forced you to play the game. That's quite cool. It's cool, but I didn't like it. Because I was like, let me be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me in this box. Stop controlling me. Because the amount of times I'm like, but I still had so much to do back there and now I can't because, yeah. you know, I had like, uh, so like, especially with, so it really fucked your achievements up as well. Right. Because yeah. there's so many achievements where, well, I've killed everyone there now. There's not that many bad guys about, but I've still got loads to do. Yeah, in that mix, so they become a bit of a nightmare. But yeah, did you yeah. enjoy that ride? Right? I did. Yeah, it's just made me want to go go do some gaming. Yeah, to be honest, I'm definitely gonna have an hour after this. I think. Yeah, yeah, I do love I do love gaming, even all these years later. Yeah, and we always will. Yeah, just wish we're, we're old had, men now. Just wish we had more time for it. Definitely, I think uh, being a single man and being well into gaming <laughs> isn't the best because you know when someone's like, you get talking to a young lady or someone and they're like, "I saw what you're into." <laughs> You tell me first. Well, I, I like going walking, socialising with friends. Yeah, I socialise with friends all right. Yeah. I socialise with my friends a lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah, every night for four hours on a headset. <laughs> and those friends are people I've never met. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, that is episode 27 done and dusted, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much for listening. Please, please, please share with your friends. Ryan, sign us Hello. off with something. Um... Um, watch Papa Roast 88 on Twitch, bitches. Peace.